Okay, guys. Uh, good afternoon, and welcome to everyone from Flying Stories. Uh, my name is Sajid, and uh, today I'll be hosting this session. Uh, I want to say I want to put in some more guidelines. We just finished this part, but we're going to redo it. Uh, some guidelines for the session today. So this is not a teaching session. If it was a teaching session, then our principal Badri would have uh, started the admission process. So that's not a teaching session. You need to control yourself and not practice anything that's been. Discussed over here by yourself. We seek uh, information and guidance from your instructors and professional people. And no personal questions, please. Let's keep this central to the to the topic today, and uh, only discussion on the subject that we have selected today. So I would like you to all to fasten your seat belts, sit back, relax, enjoy this XC and Acro flight by Clint. And uh, I would like to introduce our captain for the flight today. Uh, both the flights, uh, Captain Clint John. Uh, He uh, is actually a bird in the true sense of the word, and uh, he was in Kerala when in college when he first did his uh, P1. That's when the bug bit him, and uh, eventually when he had to move for work, he chose Pune because he knew that Kamshed was close by, and basically his uh, choice of work was influenced by flying. So that much of a, a bird this guy is. Uh, he did his P1, P2 once he came to Pune in 2014, and in 2015 he went to Bir. and that's when the real bug uh, really bit him about uh, thermaling when he realized that this is actually like an aircraft and you can fly from one place to the other and that really excited him he came back from beer and in uh, he tried doing that in uh, kamshet area and he was uh, he enjoyed that thoroughly and uh, that's when he started moving on but the 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 interest in acro has always been there right from before he joined he started doing xc So Acro was always there, but once he did his uh, fill of XC, he decided to go on and move on to Acro, and then he started. Uh, he he had been watching a lot of Acro videos earlier, and that's when he started to get develop his interest in Acro. So today he flies both XC and Acro, and he switches uh, between the two. Uh, he'll be speaking about uh, the detail of how he switches between the two in detail today. Um, he's a as a person. This is what. is the background of this person but as a person he's a very gentle humble and a very good friend a very quiet guy uh, uh, he he brings a lot of positivity to the take off whenever there is a para meeting happening you will always see him chatting with people and sitting centered in his own space playing songs and also brings a lot of maturity to the to the whole flying equation he never gets influenced by other people's decision you will always see him checking out the weather flying conditions and he'll go and fly he'll do his own if there are people who are doing acro maneuvers which he thinks is not safe he won't do it he will be around the ridge doing his own fun flying and he enjoys his flying he's also a very sweet guy uh, and uh, the reason i say he's a sweet guy is every time i've asked him to do a synchro spiral with me he says yes he never disappoints me but once we are in the air he quietly buggers off and i'm just left there so he's very sweet in saying no to uh, to us uh, he's got his own style and he enjoys it uh and it's very uh, very infectious his way of uh, flying and we i'm very i'm looking forward to hearing from him on his uh, journey on the xc and acro so uh, ladies and gentlemen please uh, welcome our captain clint john clint over to you thank you sajid <laughs> and it's an honor to be a part of this phase as we share the same skies so yeah thank you very much uh and uh, about myself uh, i am kind of a beginner uh, in acro itself uh, so it's a more of you know recently started and uh, and about xc i'm i'm still learning and experimenting uh, and still exploring so in that way in xc as well i'm kind of a novice compared to many other experienced pilots out here uh, so but uh, uh, but luckily i am able to you know uh, continue both xc and acro uh, so i'm very glad about that that i could do that uh, so today uh, what we are going to do is uh, the plan is uh, we are going to uh, say the differences uh, the you know major differences between xc and acro which i could see uh, while i uh, try to do both and uh, so i'll be sharing my screen uh, kind of more of a ppt <laughs> presentation session <laughs> so i'm going to share the screen so uh, can you guys see the screen uh, yes uh, something yes uh, clint we can see 
Okay, cool. Maybe you can go to the slide view. Right. So, uh, XC versus Acro. Uh, so most of us uh, here, I guess, uh, mostly into XC, and we all have the right equipments and you know right uh, wings and everything related to XC. Uh, and there are many who likes to take up Acro and who likes to know more about Acro, and there are. A uh, couple of pilots here who, who are doing acro already and more experience in that as well. Uh, so XC versus acro, I'll be limiting it to a couple of di differences, mainly four differences between both. And and fifth one, I like to say how I managing both. So here it is. Uh, the first is obviously the equipment. So in terms of XC, you you all know like uh, we have. Uh, you know different types of harnesses in, uh, in terms of XE port harnesses and some of you use uh, you know normal harnesses chair harnesses and stuff so th there are XE specific uh, harnesses which are used for co competitions as well which are more aerodynamic and stuff um, so in terms of acro when it comes to acro uh, especially for harnesses if you say uh, there are certain harnesses which are manufactured for uh, doing acro uh, in terms of uh, to deal with uh, more high g forces and stuff so in that way there are different uh, harnesses uh, specifically for acro in terms of if you're going ahead with acro so some of them are like a cutaway and base harnesses where you know the, there is a base parachute itself attached to the harness and uh, some of the harnesses most of the acro harnesses have like two reserve compartments uh, while uh, you know normally in uh, uh, leisure flying or in xc we in uh, normally we will be using one reserve most of the times or most of the harnesses come with one reserve compartments we use two reserves as well but most of the cases uh, we we'll, there will be only one compartment so in acro most of the harnesses come with two reserve compartments and uh, there are specific harnesses base and cutaway systems and quick release systems and even quick release speed bar for uh, for speed bars so that is one of the major different in terms of harness and wings uh, yeah, while we're speaking about wings uh, so uh, while if you are mainly like learning uh, flying and progress on the way you might be going from like uh, you know in a in a serial way like the certified ENA ENB then you fly a lot of uh, XE and then you slowly move into different higher levels ENC, ENT and ultimately the competition wings there are uh, ENT and triple C wings uh, and this is how the progression goes in terms of you know a mostly cross country XE or the normal uh, you know recreation flying you go from ENAB to ENB and in terms of acro when it comes to acro the progression uh, you will be flying for a long time once the normal once you are uh, you know well trained in your once you have enough hours and stuff, you will be progressing as uh, you might be taking up a freestyle wing, then freestyle wing, then move into an acro wing. So freestyle wings uh, are, are generally, uh, you know, um, some are certified, some are not certified, but uh, uh, these are uh, more dynamic in nature, like compared to other serial wings. Uh, these are more higher speed, uh, you know, it's more dynamic uh, so that you can do uh, many maneuvers easily, more fast, uh, and it's, uh, it's easier to, you know, uh, spin the glider and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's like that. And some of the freestyle wings, uh, when you say freestyle, some of them are certified, like END or uh, based on it. Uh, and acro, most of the acro wings are not certified. And they are only load tested or uh, load certified, like based on different categories. Um, so this is how the wings uh, and equipments in general terms. Clint, yep. uh, can I request you to go a little bit slow uh, on the speed? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so these people, too much information, so just a little bit slower. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. One more request, Clint. It is, uh, I know you are giving me theoretically one by one everything. Can you, can you just, uh, your experience, how you started? I'm sure that you didn't have uh, uh, acro harness when, uh, harness when you have started acro. Right, right. right. So you take it slowly, that how you have done it. Uh, theoretically, there is a way, uh, we understand, but you also add your Thank right so uh, so generally this is the the division and uh, when it comes when you know how i practiced and stuff so in my experience like i was basically flying an enb wing 
and in ENB wing and a normal harness. I didn't have an acro harness, so I, I was mainly flying on a normal harness and an ENB wing. And uh, uh, I practiced, uh, you know, my the, the usual basic maneuvers in in that wing itself. Uh, you don't need an, uh, you know, acro harness or uh, acro freestyle wing uh, directly. You don't need to jump into that, uh, you know, to learn the basic maneuvers and to learn the basic acro stuff. Uh, that is uh, the, the myth many of the people have. So uh, you, this is how I practiced. I started with an ENB glider and I practiced in it and I make sure my basic maneuvers, I'm, I, I was really comfortable in executing, you know, deep wing overs, um, uh, sats. I did uh, n number of sats in 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 my ENB wing, and I could do very really deep wing overs uh, without any discomfort. Um, and uh, then I slowly progressed to the next, uh, you know, the freestyle wing, or that that that, that was uh, the progression how it was. I I hope this answers it right. Uh, yeah, Clint, uh, would you just add a little bit uh, to the experience that you have had in uh, XE? Like what, what was the distance that you did that you remembered a lot? And then while you were doing these uh, acro maneuvers on the ENB wing, mm -hmm. what were your feelings that time? What made you feel that you could actually get into it? And maybe just turn a little bit to your right hand side so that we can see. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, what really the distance is even before I, uh, I, you know, when I started practicing acro, I could do a bit of distances. Uh, even in beer was my first experience. So I could do every day I was pushing a bit and I could do some 20, 30, then it goes up to 40, 50. I think I'm all the first time in beer, I, the max distance, I could do some 50 plus. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, and then I came back and again, I started doing, uh, you know, flying over here, some regular flying more distances. It was mainly focusing on just being in air and covering more distance. Uh, it was some b basic flying, you know, XC stuff. So slowly, uh, as I do more progress in that, I got more feel of the wing and more distances I could cover. Then uh, in terms of the maneuvers, uh, you know, uh, I was doing, uh, I did an SIV that's, uh, you know, uh, which gave me a good feel of the wing and how far I can push and how, how far I can uh, take the wing. And also I could really understand the wing, how it behaves. So that's when I really started, uh, you know, the, the basic maneuvers uh, doing it over and over. So the first SIV gave a base, I can say. Uh, so I could really you know, understand the wing, how it behaves. So that, that was the base. So that, then there, uh, so the things I was building on slowly. So that's, uh, that, that was it, how it was. Okay. Yeah, Clint. Uh, maybe, uh, are, are you done with the screen? Maybe you can just show it for a bit and then you can come back to the speaker mode. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Then again, there, there are a couple of, uh, you know, differences, uh, mainly if you're speaking about differences, uh, about XE and Acro, there are training and there are, there are certain flying style differences and even differences in flying size. So I just quickly go through it. Uh, in, in terms of the training, you're in, in, specifically in XE, you'll be focusing on thermaling, then covering more distances, which routes you take and uh, you're, uh, you, you, have to learn you will be more focusing on whether uh, each day you have to do a lot of you know study for longer xc flights uh, and of course for competitions it's uh, uh, different types of you need to train a lot for that as well and the especially for xc in terms of normal flying and xc the normal siv you know the basic siv uh, focuses on the basic maneuvers uh, mainly to understand the, the wing behavior so that you will be comfortable in flying. Uh, th that's uh, when it comes to SIV. But when it goes to the acro training, uh, uh, as a precondition, you should be having, I mean, you suppose you will be having a fair amount of flying uh, time on your own and uh, you know, basic fundamentals and a set. Uh, so when you progress uh, SIV, then there are then certain, uh, you know, specific acro specific courses, uh, especially, uh, you know, start uh, doing acro. So it is always advised to learn over water uh, to be safe and uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with rescue uh, and, uh, you know, proper uh, guidance. So it is never 
I won't advise it to start your own try something uh, in, in terms of acro maneuvers. Uh, it is always advised to start progress slowly and uh, do something, uh, I mean, start under supervision and expert guidance. Uh, and yeah, in terms of training, then you will be progressing slowly. It, you'll be more focused on the maneuvers you are doing in acro. Uh, like it, it is broken down into different, there are basic to advanced maneuvers and you'll be more focused on doing maneuvers. Uh, not, you, you won't be uh, you know, focusing on like how long you'll be staying in air or something like that. It's Explain, I've got maneuvers. a question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you take the slide, uh, share screen, stop this share screen? Yeah. And so, share. yeah. So you said that there is a, a system of training that you went through for XC and then you went through a system for uh, Acro. Mm -hmm. So what was the Acro mein jo, uh, manuver karna ch uh, that you really wanted? Okay. So To start off with. Thoda, Hindi mein bhi hum log baat karenge, there are other people who... Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll try, but uh, I'm not ah, good at Hindi. Yeah. I mean, ah, <laughs> so I hope. Uh, I will. I will uh, translate. Yeah, right. So uh, the basic transition uh, first when I was, uh, you know, uh, I was already comfortable with my wingovers uh, and sat already uh, before I started, uh, you know, doing other maneuvers. So then uh, the most of the like I was looking forward when I started. Uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it it started. Uh, Acro. You know, yeah, you get the feel of the wing, so you stall a lot. You need to stall the wing a lot uh, in first to understand now how the wing behaves. So, first, sat or stall, both are done. Right. When it when the I'm saying about more of the acro, but you started huh, with the stalls acro. and stuff. You uh, okay. so um, then. Uh, be in a kind or more focusing on um, uh, we started with asymmetric spirals like basic th that is to get the feel of the wing asymmetric spirals and uh, wing overs and then slowly uh, as once we you know you know the, the rhythm and stuff uh, you slowly progress on uh, practicing one off in my there are a couple of maneuvers which we aimed uh, at first acro like um, uh, one was helico, but that was not the, you know, you don't directly jump into helico. You first land on parachutals, like parachute or deep stalls. So we were practicing that, uh, I mean, uh, a lot for many days to understand, uh, you know, how, so, how, how so, to go to deep, so to, uh, deep stall. So sat, spirals, mm -hmm. stalls, both sara kia. Right. Baad mein you wanted to jump into asymmetrical spirals and helicos, but before that, uske pehle, uh, you, uh, you wanted to do okay, both sara stalls. Karna. So approximately, Kya stalls, kitne stalls kiye tumne? Aur sa wing apne use kiya? Okay, so the stalls, uh, even in uh, you know the first SIV itself, uh, with ENB glider, uh, we, start, we we all do st uh, stalls in SIV, right? So what I did, I even after a few days of SIV, I did a couple of days after SIV to practice on my self. Uh, to get the feel of that. So I practiced a bit of myself, like uh, you uh, stall more, you stall the wing, recover and stall it again, recover. So I was doing that. Uh, so I was, uh, I could get a feel of stalls uh, at that point of time. Then again, um, and before, you know, transitioning, uh, you do stalls. And again, when you uh, start practicing parachutal, sometimes you, uh, you know, you always, you you know by mistake go into stalls you so can't sab, control it really so e and b pe tumne pehle practice start kiya lot bahut sara stall kiya right. parachute will try kiya lekin jab bhi parachute will try kar rahe the kyunki wo ekdam uh, uh, sensitive one, maneuver hai wo stall mein jata tha yeah one thing i didn't actually uh, train parachute in e and b but i was uh, more concentrated on doing stalls wing overs sat in in an e and b wing but then uh, it was like practiced uh, you know in a more intense way, like regularly. Okay. Okay. So, so sat, uh, or consada in the petum nega guess that sat stalls, sat stalls, uh, um, uh, apart from the regular, I mean, uh, the SIVs, yeah, wing overs. I could do deep wing overs, then loops, loops, looping. okay, yeah, yes, of E and B, right. Or uh, you then switch to an acro freestyle wing. Freestyle uh, wing. Is Akira the right uh, wing that we are talking about? Yes. Is Akira the same wing? Hai? So, uh, now you are Akira. Yes, Akira, Akira. Yes, right. 
सो या व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस ये विंग में क्या डिफरेंस है और ये सब आपने इस पे किया क्या व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द सिमिलरिटी बिटवीन और डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू विंग्स ई एंड बी एंड एंड अकीला ऑन द सेम मैनूवर्स सो सी ई एंड the one of the difference is uh, you know when you switch to when this transition happen you feel that uh, these wings freestyle or uh, it's much more dynamic and it's it responds very fast it's much more faster uh, and in terms of enb uh, uh, it it's um, compared to that it's less dynamic in terms of you know how fast it can go and uh, so and especially in wing overs you know it's more easier to do wing over in a freestyle or acro wing than enb wings so it's better to learn in an enb wing than a freestyle wing because you are necessarily not learning anything when you're doing wing overs in free, freestyle or the such uh, because it's it's already dynamic and it can go easily you can easily do wing overs but uh, it's more technical when you learn in an enb so it's it's easier to learn and you learn a lot from you know doing wing overs and stuff in an enb wing rather than doing in a in you know, a freestyle uh, wing that's a very good point both valid point ago uh, so your your uh, experience on enb on these maneuvers actually helped you aapko madad kiya ye ke pehle aapne enb pe kiya tha so right. acro mein aane ke baad it just more faster and you got to control it much faster but you know knew the basics of it before right right i have uh, you know almost all the maneuvers uh, the basic maneuvers I, we i have practiced uh, properly in in, in an enb and that helped a lot you know for the transition so in terms of fun maza jisme kisme zyada aa raha tha enb or acro mein kya kya difference tha uh uh it's uh, it's different enb you're more uh, you know um, focusing on rather than acro you're focusing on flying so i was enjoying the flying and at times uh, doing some maneuvers ads and stuff uh so but, but in uh, freestyle when you're really focusing on doing maneuvers and doing some then it's uh, it's uh, like uh, it, it's equally as if you're flying xc for a long distance it's it's the same excitement that is happening over there so yeah okay so that's so you're basically enjoying both sides right right okay so uh, after that what did you do so you got uh, your acro wing yeah right acro wing free, free style so uh, the first few uh, uh, maneuvers that you did were wing overs stalls and asymmetrical spirals yeah sat and, and sat, sat was next yeah so this is how the transition happened basically and then now we go on other maneuvers uh, like you try try practicing parachutals uh, and uh, um heli- if you are trying helicos uh, is a very complicated maneuver uh, so yeah then uh, the, the, there are you know rhythmic sat there are a couple of other maneuvers as well which uh, as pr- practiced as a first set of you know level how so, how do you think uh, your current acro freestyle wing which is akila uh, in the man- in the manual it says that you can uh, thermal with it have you tried thermaling with that in uh, in kamshet and is there any uh, difference and things that we need to know okay so uh, as you say these uh, generally this uh, freestyle and acro wings are not really good at thermaling and no not really good at uh going long distances like and exceeding do uh but then uh these are generally mainly uh, you know uh made to execute uh, maneuvers uh, to be more dynamic and of course uh, since because of those features uh, it has a lot of sink rate as well like uh, you know you're not floating around that much in a weak lift probably enb wings and other wings will be flying and you might go down so but then of course you can thermal to a level but it's you know uh, it's much better in an other wings than compared to these wings so okay okay cool so we got the difference now that you started off with xc and acro and this and you practiced on acro uh, on the enb a few acro maneuvers then you got the acro wing and then you've been doing a extended versions of maneuvers on the acro wing and uh, the difference between the two uh, thermaling is possible on the acro wing uh, akila but it is not really efficient and that's where we are would you like to continue with your uh, presentation now yes yes think? right yep so let me my, uh, share my screen again 
so we talked a bit of training now and uh, yeah flying style of course it's it's something related to training yeah, we are more focusing on long distance and uh, you know the style between xc and acro it's a bit different when you're focusing more on long distance and of course it it have its own benefits and you know the excitements which is happening like you get to land when you're doing xc you get to land in an unknown place and you get to meet a lot of new you know curious villagers and stuff and you get to hitchhike uh, if you're landing somewhere out so it's it's a, it's a different uh, you know uh, world uh, and even in terms of acro then you're more focusing uh, again it's a different types of uh, you know style uh, you're more focusing on maneuvers rather than spending time in air or rather than you know uh, uh, tacking distances uh, and also you come across uh, you know you G4, more G forces, you are dealing with more speed. Uh, the glider moves, you know, the, the moment is different. Uh, and of right. course, because of these, more adrenaline and uh, it's right. intense as well, uh, like the, uh, how you get the feel. Right. So uh, both Could of them- Could you tell us the name of the maneuver that is on the right-hand side corner of your presentation? <laughs> that is something for <laughs> maybe okay. a, a ground. <laughs> Okay, so, so you, we've just spent a little bit time on this, uh, on the difference. Maybe uh, the next uh, slide would be more right. So yeah, flying sites. Uh, this is of course, the, uh, the, most of the sites XE, we sometimes, uh, you know, when it becomes for XE, the sites are different. Uh, we pick uh, sites where we can fly along like Beer and Panchkini and uh, there are plenty of landings or depending on what you are aiming to do. And uh, more reliable weather for, especially when you're planning for XE, uh, and stuff, uh, and also in terms of acro, the important point is um, when you are learning or when you are in progression, it's important to find a site where you can fly over water, because uh, you know when you it's it's very important because it is not recommended to practice or start start. Uh, you know, the uh, training acro over ground because uh, when you're training, uh, there is a high probability you can deploy reserve at any point of time. There are n many things can go wrong at any point of time. You might get scared or some, some other maneuvers can go wrong. So uh, you have to uh, practice it over water that's recommended. Uh, so you find sites based on that, find sites, uh, you know, uh, where you can fly over water and where you get good height over water. And there are a couple of sites in India itself, like uh, uh, even a couple of these guys, many have been flying there, like Thari, Bilaspur, and even we have a site nearby Pokhara, and there are many other sites all around the world. Uh, so this will help in progression and also, yeah, it's in, in terms of safety wise, of course, uh, it is in such a way that it should be, uh, you know, we'll be flying over water. So that's about the sites. So, right. the, you know, most of the basic differences are covered like that. Right. Yeah, I think this is an interesting uh, discussion that we should have on this slide number five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is mostly about how I managed XE and Acro. Uh, I mean, uh, how maybe I can give an idea if someone is planning to, you know, uh, try both and continue like that. So this is how it's been for me. Like uh, when I wanted to do both, I was actually interested in XE. Uh, I was enjoying XE as well as when I started Acro, I started enjoying that as well. So. Before we get on to this, I just want to ask a question for people who are on the edge right now thinking, should I get into Acro and should I, or continue with XE or eventually people who want to get into Acro. Right. Uh, would you say that uh, your XE flying uh, becomes a little bit more uh, confident, uh, you become more confident in XE flying if you've done a lot of Acro maneuvers? Would that be uh, a fair thing to say? Or maybe you can explain a little bit while you explain this. Yes, of course, I will... Uh agree on that uh, it really helps uh, in your you know glider control and how you're comfortable with the different types of wings of course different wing movements and stuff so it will for sure definitely uh, help uh, in terms of xc flying as well for, for an example when i uh, you know uh, moved uh, from an enb to an enc wing uh, so i was uh, uh, before that transition i did a lot of uh, you know acro as well that was the point of time i did a lot of you know basic acro maneuvers even i was progressing on acro 
so during that time i did a lot of maneuvers i did a lot of uh, stalls and helicos and all the stuff so i i could get a, few, a lot of feel of like how a wing moves uh, how sensitive uh, you know uh, different maneuvers uh, at times and i could see wing in a really different positions where you know than the normal flying so i was really comfortable in a lot of aspects of uh, how a glider behaves and how it goes and i could uh, it builds uh, it it had already built my confidence so when i moved to an enc wing uh, with that in in hand it was much easier for me to adjust to the you know feel and behavior of the wing and i could fly more easily to it suppose if for example if i am not if, if i was not doing that if i wouldn't have done that and if, if i was flying enough of course i'll be progressing slowly but still i think there uh, i wouldn't have progressed that easily to that wing uh, in i mean with respect to my opinion for me uh, i wouldn't have pro progressed in that way because of this in hand i was much more comfortable i knew how a wing will behave okay. so i was uh, i could you know uh, okay. fly so it basically easily. you found it much easier because you'd done acro when you got the enc you were much uh, better to progress faster than before right okay i so, mean that, uh, that, that was for me that was uh, yeah ओके तो अभी हम लोग विल जस्ट टेक अ ब्रेक लेते हैं एंड विल क्वेश्चंस लेते हैं ऑडियंस से सो एनीवन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस वांट्स टू आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन कैन यू जस्ट इधर रेज योर हैंड और सो उदय हैज अ क्वेश्चन उदय गो हेड सो हाय बाबा क्लीन बाबा हे उदय सो लाइक साजिद सेड यस यू नो क्लिंट हैज बीन वन ऑफ द आई मीन most uh, friendly pilots that you will ever come across so i have one question for you which i always wonder because you know i have seen pilots either move to xc or move to acro i mean at one point you come at one level and then you choose a direction uh, you are probably one of the very few guys or i i don't even really know anyone who does both with equal passion uh but i think there has to be some difference there is there must be something that you like more than the other so i wanted to know what is that and what really uh, you know i mean uh, not the technical part but you know how do you really manage to do both because both needs a different mindset i mean acro you really need to be aggressive and you know in control and uh, in xc you need a lot of endurance and mind power so how does that come to you that's really my these two questions in one okay uh so uh yeah how uh, i was interested in both uh, i mean in xc or acro like uh, uh you know everyone it's different i was i started enjoying both in a way like yeah, i i started flying long distances uh, you know i started uh, i started liking it uh, uh, and as well as the same the different acro moves and how the maneuvers uh, we do maneuvers and how how it feels uh, so kind of uh, when you start liking it of course you want to do so if there is no option <laughs> you know to leave one and to continue only one <laughs> you end up doing both when you like both <laughs> so that happened to me in that way uh, that is that uh, that is about it and what was the next question which you asked uh, sorry they can you oda you muted i i guess you are muted me sorry oh yeah go ahead so uh, the other one was uh, there has to be something that you like more than the other you know because what is your temperament is it more the gutsy types that you like to do the acro maneuvers or it's more the resilient types where you can go long distance uh it's kind of both for me as of now uh, because i'm liking both and i'm enjoying both that's the main part right when you fly if you're liking it and if, if you're enjoying it uh, then uh, that's the, i guess that's the main point so as of now i'm liking it both and uh, of course each of uh, it have its own you know different excitements and different uh, you know feel so uh, it's uh, it's good to you know get both of the sides it's actually if you say uh, it's uh, the, the the sides of one coin itself acro and xc you can consider like that i think enjoys acro more it's just not that <laughs> okay with that does it answer your question yeah absolutely okay great uh a next question is from uh, rohit rohit go ahead you're unmuted i claimed uh rohit. the question that i have is i have seen recently you have upgraded to a nice enc and you have been in a comp in uh, nepal as well uh, but from that or your rook to experiences in 
in uh, cross country have you come across a real life situation maybe a collapse cascade or something um, otherwise would have scared you a uh, bit more in detail how did um, your training on the acro side help you to cope better with that right so uh, i'll give another example for it so uh, when i uh, started flying in ENC, especially in Panchkani. So you know how uh, most of the, it's, it's, there are strong thermals and stuff. And uh, when we started flying uh, at Panchkani, at, and one day when we were flying, I got a, I mean, kind of asymmetric collapse and it was like really uh, shooting in front and it was going, started to, uh, you know, just uh, going in and on, you know how uh, it started to go in a really fast manner. But then uh, since, I was already doing it and, uh, you know, I did a lot of similar situations in, uh, you know, freestyle wing or in, in my acro training or whatever it is. Uh, so I could, you know, easily react to it and I was not scared at that point of time. And I knew how to, you know, how to easily manage that uh, at that point of time. So I was not scared, uh, but I knew how to manage the situation at, uh, at that point. So I could recover it very well and I could uh, fly, uh, keep flying with it. Okay, Rohit, uh, good with that. Okay, uh, the next yeah. question is from Renul. Uh, Renul, please go ahead. Uh, hi, Clint. Okay, hi, so I want to know, uh, how do you go about with the reserve management? Like in your slide also, you said like, go in for lots of reserves, but like, how do you actually practically switch between, okay, flying XC, then the next weekend, you're going to go probably go with your acro kit and what's the ideal situation? What's the Jugaad situation? Or, you're know. <laughs> always looking for Juga. <laughs> Indians. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the thing is, yeah, right. So that's a actual, uh, you know, that's a good question. So okay. when you actually want to continue both, if there are certain instances you will, you know, continually switch, especially you have different set of equipment, sport harness and an right, right. And some days, you know, you want to take the other wing and fly. So, what I did is I invested on a second reserve at first. Right. That was my first thought. I wanted any anyhow for two reserves. Uh, I prefer to fly with two reserves. Uh, so uh, especially it helps in carrying more weight as well for me since I'm underweight in my wing. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Uh, on a serious note, I prefer to have uh, yeah two reserves. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, one but thing then you can... in your acro also you have two reserves. Right. Right. So uh, I have two reserves in Acro as well. Uh, okay. So it's just two reserves, but I'm using it on both. When I fly Acro, I move those reserves in my, uh, you know, Acro two harness of. attach it and fly with it. And when I switch to XC, I uh, remove one of the reserve or two reserves in case if needed. Uh, so okay. uh, if you're, if you have two reserves, then it's much more easier to manage if you Correct. know, uh, I mean, if you have, if you fly, if you want to fly an XC one weekend and one the next weekend, if you feel it's uh, it's if you want to fly freestyle then you can uh, take the reserve put it in on the other and uh, you can manage it okay uh, but yeah two reserves is preferred uh, and if you know how to you know it's not a uh, once you learn how to install the reserves it's it's a it's a really important part you know how to attach your reserve in your harness uh, so you. you can manage yourself uh, so many of the guys uh, you know many of the people don't know you know how to uh, attach the reserve properly it's not about packing the reserve uh, you know just removing the reserve and attaching it properly itself you should know as a pilot so it's it becomes much easier you know how to attach the wing how to uh, if see if it's everything is right so it's easier to switch a reserve from one uh, you know wing to the other so that you can uh, choose uh, you know equipment based on your uh, choice and fly okay renul are we good answers yeah. your question oh, okay cool okay. Uh, uh, Clint, do you want to have a sip of water or something? Uh, the next question is from Badri. I can read it out to you. Okay. Do you want sure, to have sure. a sip of water? Are you okay? No, it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. On. So, Badri is asking, how do you decide which wing to fly today on any particular day? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a <laughs> difficult question. It's more than uh, for a particular day. What I do is, uh, you know, I divide the season basically for <laughs> XC and Acro. So, uh, when uh, towards the, especially in Kamshed, since I'm in Pune, uh, towards the beginning of season, mostly we fly in Tower Kamshed, uh, Tower Hill East. <laughs> so 
uh, it's uh, since because of uh, a lot of restrictions and stuff, it's not really a good place. You know, you can go XC uh, uh, or do lo go uh, you know long distances and stuff. So I tend to take the I uh, you during that couple of like one or two months, I use my the other wing, which I like to play around, do a lot of wing overs. So. I'm continuously doing that every weekend. Uh, so I divide uh, those months for, uh, you know, playing with these wings. And then when it comes to XC, it, it, it is a really good season um, from Jan, Feb, and to Mars to fly in Panchkini, especially for XC. So then I switch to XC mode and <laughs> take the XC wing, and then I start flying XC. So in a way, I could manage in that way. I don't generally, and uh, switching about, uh, uh, you know, in a day, I don't really think uh, in that way. Mostly, I divide the season. For me, as of now, I divide the season in that way and fly. Badri, I can also answer that question. My decision is based, I come always with both the wings, XE as well as uh, <laughs> the Akila. We both fly the same wings. And most, mostly, this guy will be on uh, tower uh, with, uh, with Akila. So, my decision is already made then. I mean, I cannot fly with an XE wing when there is already an Akila there. So yeah, he, he influences my decision. Okay, uh, thanks Badri for that question. Uh, Clint, uh, can we move on with your uh, presentation? Uh, I think there is, uh, there is one more question from Shrikant. Maybe we can uh, mm -hmm. ask this, I'll ask this question to you once uh, you finish a few slides so we can break this up. Uh, Shrikant will oh, ask okay. Me so about the slides, it's more or less the things which I, uh, I mean, which we talked uh, just now. Uh, I hope you can see the screen again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. I gone. guess uh, I. Sorry about that. I'm sharing it again. Yeah. I hope you can see it now. Yes. So it's it's uh, more or less which we discussed right now how right. how I manage you know uh, both right. uh, in in my own way. So I divide the season for XC and Acro. Uh, between uh, the seasons and uh, switching the gear from XC to Acro, it's better if you, if you in Acro you should fly with two reserves or it's better to get two reserves. Uh, um, so try to invest uh, in uh, that. Or if you have only one reserve, then you can uh, switch uh, your reserve from one uh, if if you have a different board hardness and if you have a different uh, you know chair hardness for something like that, then right. you can switch your reserve and uh, see which one you can use. And, uh, and then you, Another thing which I did is, uh, you know, you make a plan for an year. You look for an year ahead and see uh, which is the best season to fly XC, which is the uh, when I can fly Acro, uh, which is the good season. You know, you can plan your travel and take vacations from your work. Uh, you see, make a plan regarding that. So mostly what I do for now for monsoons, it's, um, basically there is no flying happening over here. So we plan a couple of us plan together to go some other place to practice acro. So you get to practice acro and in, in good XC flying season, you get to practice XC over here. Or uh, during the season, uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, there are a couple of sites here itself. You can plan a couple of days a week of uh, flying over water here, like Bilaspur. There are a couple of other good places people are flying. So you can always plan like that. You can, uh, you know, uh, spend a uh, week if possible, depending upon your time uh, there, and then uh, go go back to another site for a different flying. Uh, and and also by progression. Mm, for okay. or for, for both? Uh, both. So you, when you plan, uh, you plan, you know, uh, for XC, I was uh, interested in competitions as well, because I believe uh, competitions are a very good uh, platform to learn. Uh, you know, you get to learn a lot of things, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, you know when you keep flying com competitions and um, you get to talk to a lot of uh, good pilots and they give you that knowledge how they fly and how they manage and that's a good part of comms you know and uh, it is much safer for me i think uh, uh, in a way, because the way it is organized, there are plenty of retrieves. They are planned. Uh, safety standards are high. They, they are already planned uh, retrieves, uh, first aids, uh, you know, uh, backups, and everything is in place. Everything is well arranged. So 
there is uh, you don't need to think too much you just need to plan your flight and fly the comm uh, and learn from it uh, so that was my plan so i plan i focus on uh, you know the comms which is happening mostly over here nationally like beer or if okay. it's any, anything in panchkane i used to fly like that okay and if if then rest of the time for if other vacations for acro and stuff so yeah the, so everything uh, based on vacation we need time to do all this vacations or whatever more time to uh, <laughs> yeah spend more time to uh, have practice more basically right. and be able to travel yeah when you practice right. uh, it's better to practice you know for some uh, period of time like right. lo- longer the the duration it's it's always better you right. know uh, especially in acro uh, like if you get to take a lot of leave and try it uh, you know Uh, slowly uh, keep doing the maneuvers so right. it's a, you get to learn a lot during the small amount of time right. uh, so th- yeah that's uh, so move okay. on to the next one next slide uh okay yeah and yeah another thing i forgot is uh, yeah keep be motivated and updated on both <laughs> watch out for you know all your uh, xc news uh, all your <clears> you know, <throat> tracks and stuff keep an eye on it and at the same time and all the uh, new maneuvers that are coming right, in uh, right stall even, to infinity right even of. in acro there are many exciting maneuvers which you right. you can watch out for and even follow those so it's it's always exciting you know when you see a lot of these things you're always motivated to do right. and follow it so that's another part <laughs> so yeah that's uh, how it is uh, so most of the part is almost completed then these are some which i thought i should share uh, things to remember that yeah, so, is important yeah the thing is uh, even if you are planning for a uh, xc or acro uh, it is important to keep your fund- foundations right which means uh, you know your glider control basic weather uh, understanding about the weather right. and all the stuff so make sure uh, your foundations are right and uh, you know well about it and um, you so i think your foundations for acro came in from uh, trying it on the enb wing when you were doing xc exactly that right. uh, that gives and i think it cross feeds once you get better at xc uh, sorry better at acro then you are able to do a better xc because you're more confident now so i think it it cross feeds each other Would right 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 and uh, yeah then uh, maintain the right attitude and patient i mean uh, don't rush on different you know don't rush too much you everyone know you know your own limit uh, right. and uh, what are the things you are comfortable with maybe you are not comfortable at all in acro then you don't need right. to necessarily push for that right. uh, you keep flying whichever the thing is comfortable and right. uh, yeah maintain that and see which is comfortable and push slowly so that you get comfortable slowly with it and you might start liking right. it right so that's uh, i guess someone recently should... told me uh, sadid why would anybody want to do a sa a close friend of mine why would you want to do a helico why would you want you know other people i mean i never thought about it from that point of view uh, for me it's a rush for me i love uh, doing the acro maneuvers and it's for me it's a rush like i want to do that but you're right when you say that if it is not for you if it doesn't excite you there's no need to get into it like you should do what you have. that's why the right attitude comes into place am i right in saying that right i mean uh, yeah don't which is you said it correctly yeah. yeah if it scares you i mean too much then uh, don't push hard for that keep uh, take a step back and uh, see which is more comfortable and uh, s- build slowly through it uh, then you will uh, become comfortable at a later point of time you don't right. need to rush that's it uh, which uh, yeah what you said is exactly right and another thing is most of the thing which you need to remember is safety first you always keep in mind uh, the safe you never compromise on safety uh, safety like it would be to uh, reserves to start off with yeah to uh, i mean in terms of reserves uh, fly with reserves of course uh, and in terms of acro uh, it is recommended to fly with two reserves because when you're doing when as you progress and when you're doing a lot of different you know high high speed maneuvers and uh, you tend to you know uh, get into different situations right. which might uh, which might uh, you know when you throw your reserve it might get entangled in a wing right. so if you have only one wing then there is no other choice right if it's that situation happens so this is just when you as you progress towards that so right. but then it that's why most of the you know uh, the, the game for two reserves comes into uh, you know the uh, play so 
two reserves uh, nothing better than that uh, and uh, apart from reserves it's uh, you know keep safety first when you practice your maneuvers and uh, practice under you know when someone is watching over you or under your guy you you know mm, uh, instructor's guidance right. or practice over water if you are uh, you know doing a lot of new maneuvers or practicing acro uh, it is better for your uh, progression as well and it is uh, safety is most and even especially when you're practicing over water it's just simply practicing over water make sure you have a rescue board or someone right. you course. know below uh, and plus you're wearing a life vest or uh, life vest when you are practicing your right. water this is also part of that so right. in terms of xe as well uh, you know take good decisions uh, don't fly in you know uh, don't push too much uh, in, when the weather is right weather. not right for you right. so these are all safety aspects keep that always in mind uh, so that is one of the most important points and also for xe uh, like even uh, debu was saying that you don't need to do in b you don't need to do dhamshala because everyone is doing you need to do what you're comfortable with so you make those decisions which are right for you and right. and like you said uh, you need to be honest to yourself to know what your limits are be it xe be it acro and right. understand what your limits are and what you're comfortable with and just be around in that and slowly progress right so yeah that's about it and when you do when uh, when you focus on safety you focus on uh, try to focus on you know it's not only your safety it's others as well flying around you right so uh, be take care of that aspect as well right and uh, yeah uh, then in terms of balance it's about if you're looking to fly xc and acro then plan your things according to that what date you want and which are the good season for xc and where you can practice your acro safely and stuff so uh, you get to plan based on that so balance on your flying aspect work aspect and your personal life so right. keep a balance on everything so that that helps uh, and that is, is about is that is this your last slide or is there something else behind this sorry yeah okay. this is the last one last this is okay. the last so one. Uh, do you think we can take some questions now friend yep Okay, so uh, guys, oh, this is opened up now for questions. Uh, Clint is uh, going to talk about both the sides of XE and uh, Acro. My first question comes from Shrikant. His uh, question is: Acro does Acro need to be done over water? No, sorry, he says Acro needs to be done over water. You said there are very less schools that offer courses in in this, uh, and is this the reason why we have less Acro pilots compared to XE pilots? Very good question. yeah uh, of course right which is yeah you are rightly said i mean uh, you don't need to practice no one is comfortable to practice new maneuvers over you know ground right and you can't practice uh, alone as well it is dangerous so that can be one reason uh, you know you and especially uh, uh in india we don't have much acro specific sites uh, m- not much or uh, but we still do have some so uh, yeah that that can be the reason and uh, it's important to practice over water uh, especially when you are uh, you know learning uh, while your progression it is very important uh, since uh, you know you have to be safe and uh, while you are uh, doing lot of maneuvers lot of things can go wrong uh, so yes uh, shrikant yeah. your uh, mic is uh, unmuted do you want to add anything to this yeah um it's a very rare breed uh, clint is a very rare breed because he's uh, having both the disciplines going right so that's why I, you know uh, all of us have a school nearby to go to kamshed or beer uh, to practice xc you know but in acro you have to go to bilas or uh, you know turkey to find that that's that's a reason probably is also a bachelor that's why he is pushing us <laughs> yeah that's a very important point right that, that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> okay so, yeah. Yeah. is that okay shri Yeah, yeah. Look, okay, good. Cool. Uh, Clint, uh, the next question is from Daksh. I tried to unmute him, but he doesn't have a mic. So I'll read out the question to you. Daksh says, uh, "Do you visualize a maneuver before you practice it?" Right. That's a that's a very good question. I mean, uh, yeah. Even uh, especially if, uh, for an uh, the acro, we are uh, even I personally used to visualize or watch uh, videos. uh not for uh, you know to get the feel of that maneuver and i used to you know, watch a lot of videos actually uh about acro so but then uh, before doing a maneuver it's important to visualize it uh, if you are doing helico it is important to see where your hands are like how how you 
going to do so you know it it's uh, you know unconsciously it's something is uh, engraved into your mind so you are visualizing it then you, you know how it it's going to happen you know and uh, when it actually do you you know how it feels and how how it is different from than you visualize and you can correct based on that and again you watch a lot of videos from that you get to learn how how the body movements are uh, and all the stuff so it it helps a lot it helps a lot actually yeah okay uh, the next question is from santosh dhal i'm trying to unmute him but uh, it's sadly not yeah. happening santosh are you is it okay yeah, um, yeah oh, okay. okay okay cool right go ahead um i think yeah i posted the question yeah. itself so it's uh, like uh, how many times you have thrown your reserve while practicing acro moves <laughs> and uh, if if no and how many times a situation have come like okay you have thought of throwing and later you have recovered it because yeah once i was doing my sive like just two months back some situation like two three times situation came i thought of okay, it's time maybe to throw the reserve but yeah later in few, in few seconds i was like i recovered so yeah i just wanted Santosh, to just could you put your video on so that we know who's talking right yeah, go ahead yeah. okay so uh, how many times i throw reserve uh, i threw only once uh, till now uh, luckily uh, and that too was during uh, the acro practice uh, you know course uh, at allo tennis uh, during the practice so yeah i uh, i threw only once so far and uh, what i you know learned from that is uh, uh, you know uh, especially when you're practicing maneuvers be, uh, be prepared for all the you know uh, situations uh, uh, you know any anything can go wrong at any point of time and uh, when you're in a messy situation and you can't recover uh, the, the important is uh, that is where this siv comes into place right uh, you get to you know simulate different uh, situations and uh, then you know uh, you can recover it or not so uh, siv is an important part uh, in 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 that resp- in that terms so then uh, how when to throw reserve and uh, i uh i can't really say on that because uh it depends on the situation uh, if you you know it's up to you to be safe and you, normally in siv you always have an instructor watching over you and you are under instruction right so um generally they you know if things are going too bad and uh, you are not responding to it they always give an instruction to do the right thing but uh, but mainly in uh, in in real uh, you know when you are on your own self uh, practicing by your own uh, it is really important to keep uh, a lot of aspects in mind in terms of height uh, you know uh, what height you are at and uh, uh, keep something in mind that uh, if something goes wrong then uh, you need to know you know when to throw reserve uh, and when not to throw reserve like a simple uh, collapse uh, which you can you think you can recover from it you don't need to throw reserve uh, for that right so uh, it's uh, important to uh, you know identify what situation you are in so that comes from mostly from experience i guess so even i'm still going through that and learning that <laughs> so maybe like instructors like tj or like many others will be able to come and order much better um, i would also yeah. say that it also depends on how high you are uh, in terms of altitude and if you are able to correct that uh, situation and you have the time to try and attempt to correct the situation that you are in and but if you are low you got to have you should throw as soon as possible but sometimes it gives you a few uh, moments for you to decide whether you want to throw the reserve or not on on your altitude right uh, clint would you say that's fair yeah i agree on that uh, but at the same time uh, one mistake which i did <laughs> is something related to that so maybe i should say this here so i had a good uh, height when i practiced when i was learning when i was learning my helicos and it went really wrong and i i was in a lot of twist a lot of twist as in more than 5 8 uh, you know a lot of uh, twist more than 8 10 rise at twist and i was still trying to recover from it uh, and my brake lines were stuck and and uh, i tried to recover from for a long time and when you know at certain point you can recover from a situation then, then uh, you don't you should not waste time on re- trying to recover so you should know that point then uh, 
that is one thing which you need to keep in mind. So uh, what happened to me is I tried recovering uh, from that and I spent a lot of time, uh, even though I had a lot, even, even though I had a lot of height, I was just keep on trying to recover it mm. rather than focusing on other things. I was just trying to recover, trying to recover it, but then I was not actually fixated. recovering. Yeah, right. fixated and, and then I was just okay. losing height and at a certain point of time, I was very low and okay. then I had to throw reserve. So yeah. Okay, so uh, Santosh, is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, like, because these kind of things, of course, right. better to learn from others than right. doing yourself. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Okay, uh, Clint, our next question is from Preeti. Preeti, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Clint, Baba. Hi, Preeti. So after your, uh, like, uh, let's say, cross-country and uh, acro and competition, what next comes? What is the next thing that you want to do or achieve <laughs> in your journey? And second question is, how do you unwind after doing all this? <laughs> you go to work. <laughs> no other option. <laughs> so uh, what's next? Uh, I really don't know. I'm enjoying what's now, right now. I mean, whatever it is, XE and the, the uh, acro, whatever the maneuvers which I can do. And of course, I really definitely like to, you know, it's just uh, acro, as I said, I'm just a beginner. I just start get got a taste of it and now it, it itself is a big uh, a vast uh, you know uh, area to you know explore uh, so yeah there are a lot of things to do and a lot less leave uh, you know vacations to do so <laughs> i guess better planning <laughs> and okay uh Pre uh, Alok Preeti is okay. She's on mute now. So, okay. Then uh, we have question from uh, Alok. Alok. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Clint, my first question is, uh, why are you wearing a cap ulta <laughs> inside, your <house? laughs> inside your house? Because, uh, you know, the hair is too much. You might get scared. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better to wear a cap. <laughs> okay. So my, uh, let, let me come back to the serious question that I have. Um, do you think uh, uh, spending time on the acro wing also helps you with uh, uh, the usage of speed bar on your XC wing? Because sometimes you are close to the terrain, you want to use the speed bar uh, for the performance reasons, for the high wind reasons, and uh, um, you need a different kind of uh, handling at that moment. And closer to the terrain, it always, uh, your heart is in your mouth always. Right. Um, so th th does it help you? Uh, in terms of speed bar, I really not, I mean, I don't think it's really dependent, uh, you know, uh, 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 but uh, I never thought about it, actually. I never gave a thought about it uh, uh, in high wind conditions, uh, using a speed bar based on, I don't think it's really related. It's more than uh, related to that. It's more basically of, you know, you know, when to use speed bar. Uh, at what conditions and when you really need to use and all the stuff. Uh, but I never actually, honestly, I never gave it a thought like that in terms of acro and using speed bar for XE pushing forward. But uh, uh, yeah, I guess. The... Okay. Uh, cool. So we don't have any more questions. Are there any more questions? Uh, anyone can raise their hand now. Cool. I don't think we have any more questions. Um, uh, Clint, uh, I think, uh, okay. Sorry, Vijay Sony has a question. Clint is also into an accuracy that makes him more unique. Only, okay, one second. Let me see where Vijay is to unmute him. Vijay, just one moment. Okay, uh, Vijay, go ahead. That's not a question. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, uh, Clint. Hey, Vijay. Uh, that's not a question. It is uh, like you are the Let's see. So that nobody knows. So you are the only pilot who are doing all the three things: accuracy, acro, and cross country. <laughs> no unique person. Oh, that's a that adds another feather to his uh, ulta cap. <laughs> Thank you, Vijay. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever uh, related to flying, <laughs> I could enjoy so far. So uh, yeah. I'm lucky in that way. So make use of uh, right time now because you are single. <laughs> it's going to be a big trouble. Yeah, you're right. 
with my 25 years of experience, I've seen many ups and down rounds. So, cool. nice. You're right. I'm trying to make maximum utilization of time. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Vijay. Thanks for that uh, uh, insight. Uh, the next question is from uh, Viz. Viz, go ahead. Um, Viz, your sound is not. Uh, Viz, it's not very clear. Viz, I think Viz has uh, exited. He'll come back in. Uh, till then, we have uh, somebody. Uh, I don't know the name. Who is this? Uh, MediaPad M5 Pro. Please go ahead. Please go ahead with the question. I've unmuted you. MediaPad M5 Pro. Yeah, hi, Sajid. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is Keith. Uh, yeah. yeah, hi, Clint. Uh, yeah, my question to Clint is how does he manage his leave? Uh, so, if you want to go, because it's pretty, you know, fortunately, or what do you say, he's not married or he's bachelor, but how he manages leave he won't, when you want to do his flying XE or different competitions. Sorry, what's your name, uh, bro? We didn't get it. Kedar. 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 Yes, Kedar. Clint, go ahead. Hmm, managing leave. <laughs> That's the the most toughest part than any acro or <laughs> XC here. <yeah. laughs> so, yeah, I mean, maybe it's uh, less responsibilities for me right now at this stage of my life. So I tend to choose all my leaves and dedicate it for flying. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of. Uh, but then uh, when you plan uh, based on the seasons and stuff, uh, if, uh, you can actually plan. Uh, you, you look ahead for an year, and if you, you have a certain set of vacations, and uh, like you always know the beer season, and you know uh, uh, some places else you can try other like uh, practice acro and stuff. And you plan based on that, and it should be fine. Viz, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Go ahead. Can you come into okay. the camera a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Clint, um, my question for you is, um, can you elaborate a little bit about the, uh, the psychological aspect of uh, XC flying? I mean, I've, I've always wondered because uh, I still haven't uh, you know, learned how to do proper wing overs. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is that the mindset required for long distance flying and the mindset required for uh, acro are completely different. So how do you switch uh, between, I mean, the seasons and all is fine, but, you know, mentally, how do you decide when you want to do what? Okay, uh, that's actually a good question. So actually the mindset for acro, uh, when you fly long distance or uh, competitions, uh, uh, I mean, not acro, like XE and competitions and acro, I guess it's more or less similar in a way than okay. being it's different. But especially when you are uh, like uh, in competitions and stuff, uh, you are always uh, thinking uh, like you're always calculating or even in long XC flights. Okay, you are looking... I, 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 I agree to that to a certain extent. But then mm -hmm. what about uh, your, say your endurance flying or when you're doing long distance, uh, you know, not right. in a competition, you know, when you do it, again, you require a different level of patience and etc. Mm -hmm. So, um, in terms of acro, uh, the I, I guess when it comes to maneuvers, it's more challenging. Uh, based on certain set of maneuvers, uh, it's more challenging to you, and certain set of maneuvers which are more easier to you. And uh, uh, it's more about uh, you know uh, uh, practicing that, uh, or um, how do you say? Uh, getting used to it, uh, like uh, doing that again and again. Uh, so you slowly get over if, if anything, you know, which holds you back when you practice, uh, when you train those, uh, you know, in, in uh, broken down into different set of sections, uh, you will slowly, uh, you know, uh, get over it, I guess. So 
is it the same which you are thinking or something else yes yeah yeah no i, I was just uh, wondering how it is for you i mean how do you decide that uh, today is an acro day and i want to get some adrenaline or you know whatever it is uh, and today you know i want to maybe take it easy and you know do some you know uh, long distance some nice scenery and things like that so i don't know i mean how how does it work for you right so uh macro i mean in a way it's it's fun to play around the wing so generally uh, you focus on more you forget about xc at that point of time just leave it don't think about it <laughs> maybe some days it, uh, i mean if you are stuck on in a same place for practicing certain maneuvers for a long time then it's i mean don't uh, think too much about xc part and concentrate on the maneuvers or the, the you know uh, the the uh, maneuvers part which you like to do So, uh, if you are feeling happy, would you decide to go acro or uh, long distance? And if you are feeling unhappy, would you decide to go acro or long distance? Careful, or what is careful, Clint. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I uh, go and sit paravading with Sajid. <laughs> okay, <laughs> when you when you are unhappy, or when you are happy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just. Uh, yeah which are makes you happy at that point of time uh, you know and based on the the okay, weather so you, you, you really it. don't have any favorites okay. <laughs> all right <laughs> okay okay cool i don't think we have any more questions uh, coming in uh, if there is any question can uh, anyone raise your hands now otherwise we will end the session now uh, clint is there anything you want to add towards the end or are we are we good Okay, one second. I don't know why you are muted. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm muted now. I, yes, it's yeah. Ah, uh, nothing else much uh, to add. I guess uh, enjoy your flying and be safe. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Okay, so good. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, thanks, uh, Badri and Uday for organizing it, and thanks, Clint, for uh, being here today. I'm going to unmute uh, everyone so everyone can thank you. Here you go. Stopping recording. <laughs> Thanks Clint. Thanks Clint. Thanks Clint. Thank Thanks Ajit.